Web 2.0 is like a highway. It's like a captive highway. You pay like those European motorways. You pay to get on it. You pay the toll. Once you're on that motorway, you have no choice. When you buy a sandwich, when you buy gasoline, when you go and have a wee, you know, when you go and log onto a Wi-Fi, you are captive to the big five company. So when you, whatever you do at the moment, you're basically captive. What Web 3.0 is, is it turns that highway it into, 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 a, into a highway of cobblestones. And you're a cobblestone and I'm a cobblestone. And having, and having a cobble means that you control your own personal integrity of your cobble. You decide who, who, who gets into your cobble, who gets out of it, who pays you for what. So when you're a cobblestone, you can say, hang on a second, I don't want to work for Uber. But as a cobblestone, I want to be a driver. So I'm going to be cobble driver. There's going to be a, there's going to be a company out there. I don't know who it is, but there'll be a company out there who will, who will set up an Uber type model. And all they will do is they will aggregate all those people, all those cobblestones that want to be drivers. And so when that $75 take, when that $75 fare with a take rate of, I don't know what Uber take, $40, $45 or something, that take rate is so high. You'll be able to you'll be able to set yourself up as a as a as a driver, and and you'll be able to keep ninety percent of of you, you'll be able to keep ninety percent of the fare because you will be enabled by blockchain. So again, without sort of laboring this whole point, if you if you think about Web two point being the highway controlled by the big five companies, the moment you become a cobblestone, you can pull your drawbridge up whenever you want. It's like being a medieval. It's like being a sort of medieval village. You know, you have a moat around it. You can have your own security. You know, you don't have all your stuff on the, on, 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 on the cloud. You can have your own cloud. You can have your own personal cloud. And you can then decide who gets access to your information and who doesn't. And, and I think that's where the world is going. And, and, and obviously, you know, I think that's what's enabled by these incredibly fast, incredibly secure networks. And so I, I think, again, it's trying to just get people to think about how Web 3.0 looks. And, and, and the one other thing I was going to say to you is that I think that when I look around the world and I look at, I think there's something in the news in the last 24 hours saying that the, the guy who was killed in Damascus was killed because he, his WhatsApp account was accessed and when they accessed his WhatsApp account, they got his location stuff and then they put a nasty, put a nasty missile down his chimney, down his chimney or whatever they did. I, I don't know what happened. I, I think there's a, I think there's a tremendous danger that, that there's, I think there's a tremendous likelihood that there's going to be many com more competing alternative type messaging app, messaging, um, businesses and everything else. But I think the sort of global lock that these U S companies now have on communications, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a sort of two, a, a, a two strand approach because you know, 85% of the population and 40% of global GDP is not in the West. It's the global South. It's BRICS. The BRICS, you know, as everyone talks about. And I think the BRICS are going to, in the next 10 years, have some of their own champions. And, and, and they're not going to want, the BRICS are not going to want to communicate on, on, US, on, on US systems. So as I said, I think we just have to sort of think about, we have to think about all this stuff, you know. In what immediately comes to mind, it's similar to, not to go down conspiracy rabbit holes and whatnot, but it's similar to like, uh, world leaders in other countries wanting to trade their oil not on U.S. dollar. Well, we saw what happened to those leaders in those countries, but it's now replace oil with day-to-day -day wants and needs, social media, how we communicate. It's become a need. It's like, you don't have a phone? What? No one, nobody knows. Nobody knows somebody without a phone, right? So I think you give up. I've never actually thought about that. That's a phenomenal point as far as uh, but it's also real. You see it with rappers. You see it with uh, business people, political, no matter who you are, like being able to find somebody's IP address through an app, through hacking, through all these documentaries we see now, Eric Snowden, whistleblower, blah, blah, blah. Like that is a real concern, right? It comes down to human safety, security, whether you're at the highest level or whether you're just a, a average Joe, an everyday person. You'll you bring up a great point. And in, in bringing up these great points, what you're doing is you're getting people to understand how the new world and ultimately digital currency and these different projects, tokenization, like how they actually are solving problems and, and how there's utility behind what people do. 
Indeed. but they do in day-to-day life and how it can three to five X in the next coming years and how it can be a 10, 15, 20, $100 trillion industry, not just people with money buying coins on Coinbase, right? So I think that you've done a heck of a job explaining the path of where this is all going.